And before uh, uh, we introduce Johannes Weichel, let me remind uh, that there will be two more public lectures in the University of Geneva at 10 o'clock in the morning, and you will find uh, further information in, in, in the papers you got. Okay, and we continue with Johannes Walcher on uh, topological strings and head pole cancellation. Thank you. <coughs> so, uh, let also uh, thank the organizers for inviting me to speak here. It's an uh, honor to speak, and, and I want to tell you about what I know uh, on head pole cancellation, the topological string. And uh, this is um, mainly based on this paper from last December. Uh, and then there are some precursors, um, essentially, uh, from May last year, that which, uh, well, the main, um, the main ideas in the B model were introduced in this paper. And then uh, the A model computations that complement it are in the paper from December. And then at the end of the talk, I want to uh, offer some speculations. And that's uh, in this paper. With, uh, and denied scope. So, um, just as an introduction, the uh, topological string is uh, valuable as, first of all, a, a toy model uh, for string dynamics. It uh, has uh, D brains, uh, gives uh, solvable examples of open closed string duality, and uh, has been conjectured to exhibit S duality, M theory. And um, second, area where the topological string is valuable is as a tool for studying uh, supersymmetric observables in ordinary uh, superstring theory compatification. So it gives uh, means to compute <coughs> any uh, one, two f terms. And uh, also uh, valuable tool in, in superstring dualities, especially in counting BPA states, uh, as was uh, reviewed this morning. So um, as you also know, um, most interesting connections in the context of the topological string arise when the target is a, a Calabi-L threefold, and when you combine uh, A and B model to mirror symmetry. And uh, just to give the, the simplest uh, statement, so the A model is related to the Kähler moduli, and the B model uh, to the complex structure moduli. And um, in this talk, uh, I want to study the topological string on compact Calabi-L threefolds. Uh, that's an important qualifier, um, and uh, including D-brains and oriented folds. So um, what is the main um, line of investigation? Um, well, as you also know, the most celebrated consistency condition of string theory is anomaly cancellation in 10-dimensional superstring. Um, and when you compactify, uh, this is uh, often rephrased as tactile cancellation. So the vanishing of, uh, or vanishing of between the between the disk and uh, <coughs> the cross cap um, diagram, where you have inserted um, the Ramon Ramon top form uh, potentials. Um, there. So um, so non vanish So these are the Ramon Ramon tuples, non vanishing uh, Ramon Ramon tuples signal inconsistency, and. Uh, so you have <coughs> So, um, and I think it's uh, also no exaggeration to say that uh, today the condition of tuple cancellation is at least technically uh, the center of the uh, string theory has a final number of, of states. Uh, <coughs> so, um, given all this and the fact that the topological string has so many features in common with the uh, superstring, this gives the following, uh, raises the following question. Is there a topological string analog of tuple cancellation? And uh, of course, I wouldn't be here if the answer were no. So, um, so there are two, uh, two, two main results that I want to summarize here. So, first of all, yes, there is a topological string analog of tactical cancellation, and uh, it's just the simplest way to phrase it will become, will rephrase it slightly more technically later. But that's basically the statement um, in the presence of background d-brains. <coughs> Only amplitudes with vanishing um, topological D-brain charge <coughs> are well defined within one topological model. Uh, otherwise, you have a mixing of uh, A and B model related to K-line complex structure moduli. And uh, well, so you can ask for a space-time interpretation. So um, why we not worry about this? 
Well, I will, I will explain later the connection to the upper cancellation in the top and the superstring, but essentially uh, F terms in input one compactifications <coughs> might mix uh, the moduli from vector and hypermodulates. And uh, so that's the first statement. Yes, there is a uh, type one cancellation condition. The second is that um, how should we cancel the tadpoles now in the superstring? Um, well, in general, we can cancel the tadpoles from background brains using antibrains or antifolds. In the superstring, supersymmetry requires the use of antifolds. And uh, so, given that, it's not immediately clear why the topological string of antifolds should be based, but I don't try to. Uh, as I'll show you, also in the, in the topological string, it's best to cancel the tadpoles using orientifolds. And um, that, that statement, in fact, is based on the relation, uh, the space-time interpretation and the statement that topological amplitudes have BPS interpretation only in this orientifold case. Uh, so <coughs> the status of these statements is um, slightly different. So in the first one, there is a fairly clear understanding uh, from the world sheet where the condition comes from. However, it's really difficult to compute an example. So I don't, I don't, I, I can, I can show you an example of uh, this mixing of Taylor and complex structure moduli. Uh, on the other hand, in the second one, you can compute. It's, uh, well, um, not too difficult to, to do the computations. However, I don't understand really um, why, why, why this, where this comes from, uh, from, from the space-time perspective. Uh, let me also give away the original motivation um, for this work. So uh, the open closed topological string has been solved uh, by, by Kuman Waffa and collaborators in many cases of non-compact manifolds. So there are basically two, two, two classes, Thore Calabrias and, uh, and then the Calabrias that are related to matrix models. And uh, Marcus Marini will, will talk of, uh, about some of this in his talk. And uh, well, open closed duality plays a fundamental role in both of these cases. And it would be nice to uh, be able to solve the problem of computing loop amplitudes in the topological string on compact Calabi house. So that was really the, um, the original motivation, and then understand the role of open closed duality for the compact case and extract maybe general lessons for string theory. So um, let, me, let me begin by uh, telling you. Um, what I mean by tadpole cancellation in a topological string. And so, just to go back to the definition. So, um, we start from a unitary uh, equal to super conformal field theory of central charge 3. Um, as I said, this is the <coughs> dimension 3 is the most um, interesting case. And we identify these generators of the uh, super conformal algebra with BRST and anti ghosts of a bosonic string of sorts in which the ghost and matter do not decouple. And in the B model, uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the identification. And then we define uh, topological string amplitudes by integrating over the modular space of Riemann surfaces the appropriate correlator from the uh, n equal to mm -hmm. CFT. So these mu are the built from the differentials on the modular space of Riemann surfaces. And um, so, in fact, there are four. Um, to, so to appreciate the type of cancellation, you have to appreciate that there are four uh, different topological models. Um, well, the A model, <coughs> so these four models differ in how you identify BRSD and anti ghost with the generators of the super conformal algebra. And so there's A model, uh, anti A model, the B model, and the anti B model. And here I have the moduli on which uh, these depend. So the Kähler moduli denoted by T and the complex structure moduli by Z. And there are symmetries. <coughs> Mm, that, um, well, that relate to various models. The, 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 well, the most famous one uh, probably is mirror symmetry uh, that relates A and B model and the general changing the target space. Uh, the the color B is replaced with this mirror. Um, and then there is the, the, the second symmetry, um, which is why people usually don't talk uh, or don't distinguish between A model and anti model. But I find it helpful uh, to have all those four. So this is Walsh's CPT that relates A model with anti-A model on the same target. And um, so the, if, if the uh, CFT is, is unitary, what this implies is that um, the, 
anti-ghost cohomology, so from the point of view of the B model, say the anti-ghost cohomology, which is really just the cohomology of the BST operator, the anti-B model, is uh, non-empty. Okay, so that's a, a distinguishing uh, feature from uh, more conventional <coughs> bosonic string backgrounds. And uh, if there's symmetries, they're also <coughs> anomalies. So um, these B model BIST trivial states from the anti-B model fail to decouple in general. This is um, known as the holomorphic uh, anomaly and goes back to uh, Brzezowski, Chico, Yogori, Bafa in 1993. So um, what this <coughs> implies is that the uh, topological amplitudes of the B model state depend on the complex structure modular in a non-holomorphic way. And uh, so this is an anomaly and arises from the boundary of the moduli space of uh, remote surfaces, as it should. And um, so this is the <coughs> this is the, the holomorphic anomaly statement of PCOV. Now, um, if you go back to these four models um, and again take the point of view of the B model, then you notice that there is also the A model there. And from the point of view of the B model, this is the uh, homol the mixed what I. I, I what one might call the mixed BRST anti ghost cohomology, which is just the cohomology of the BST operator of the A model, that's also non empty. Okay. So, um, and so these, these moduli are the Taylor moduli. And uh, BCOV have a, an argument that um, shows that these, the, the clustering amplitudes do not depend on those, uh, on those moduli. So the anomaly in this case <coughs> vanishes. However, this statement, uh, yeah, so this. This is, this is in formulas what this means. So the F will depend uh, in a non homomorphic way on the complex structure moduli, and they don't depend on the Keller moduli. And this statement has to be revisited in the presence of background T-brains, uh, as I'll show in the next few slides. So, um, again, just uh, two words on um, T-brains and topological strings. So there is the A model and the B model, and the A-brains, so the models, uh, the D-brains of the A model are Lagrangian submanifolds. Uh, to it with the flat bundle, and this is the simplest approximation. I mean, you can make much more <coughs> fancy statements. Um, however, mm, it has been noted many times that really <coughs> the deep brains in the context of the topological string lead to a very interesting interaction between uh, A and B models, so sometimes it's confusing. <coughs> this is terminology of A and B brains, but anyway, this is uh, just to remind you. And uh, there is one basic fact about deep brains um, in the topological string, which immediately gives <coughs> this mixing. So the topological charges of uh, topological deep brains are naturally carried by the other model. Um, so uh, let's take the point of view of uh, the A model. So A brains are like Martian submanifolds and they're uh, wrapped on three cycles, and uh, these naturally couple to three forms. And, um, the, <coughs> among the three forms are the complex structure deformations. So, um, formula, so the charge, so CH is for the charge um, <coughs> of this brain is uh, given by integrating over the cy three cycle, the three forms. And uh, you can also see that this is the correct uh, definition <coughs> from this <coughs> index theorem. So, this is the uh, Polshinsky way of computing the D brain charge that um, the Witten index. In the open string sector between two Lagrangians is given just by the, uh, the intersection of the corresponding three cycles. So, this observation that uh, the <coughs> that these topological charges are naturally carried by the other model gives an, anal an analogy that in the topological string, the mixed BRSD anti ghost cohomology <coughs> is like uh, the Ramon Ramon potentials of a superstring compactification. And so you can ask the question of whether we should cancel the path, maybe whether we should consider only uh, backgrounds in which these topological charges vanish. And yeah, so this is the question, but um, as I said, I, my answer is yes. And so why would we have to do this? So uh, yeah, in the, <coughs> so in the, in the superstring, if you don't cancel these Ramon Ramon tadpoles, this is really an inconsistency. In the topological string, <coughs> Um, as far as I understand, this is not uh, so fatal. However, since these uh, point point functions depend on the wrong moduli, it means that if you don't cancel the tadpoles at tree level, then uh, <coughs> the loop amplitudes will also depend on these wrong moduli. 
And so this is the statement of uh, that cancellation topological string <coughs> that A and B model decouple only for amplitudes with vanishing total D brain charge. And um, there are essentially two ways. <coughs> I want to distinguish two ways to cancel the headphones. One is to study the dependence on open string moduli. So, uh, first one, non continuous moduli. So, this is inserting uh, operators on the boundary of the whole sheet. Um, many of you have heard me claim that continuous uh, open string moduli are not so good in the topological string. So, uh, um, there is a, an alternative, which in, is a discrete version of the uh, continuous moduli. These are discrete moduli. So this is uh, essentially taking differences, or in other words, studying brain anti-brain configurations. And so this is one way. And the other way is to have or antifolds, which, uh, as I said before, is the preferred way. So um, to uh, explain why this is the preferred way, I first have to tell you how these, uh, how these computations are done, how we <coughs> get uh, the evidence <coughs> for this uh, uh, that ball cancellation using our antifold. So this is this uh, so-called extended holomorphic anomaly equation. So, um, so the holomorphic anomaly of BCOV is really the only known uh, method to compute systematically on compact Calabria uh, manifolds. And uh, the basic strategy there is to use this holomorphic anomaly equation to um, to reduce to a finite dimensional problem, and then you defer determine the integration constants from looking at uh, singularities in the moduli space, or maybe some other duality. And so uh, the state of the art, I think, is uh, FG on the quintic uh, can be computed in this way up to 51 loops. Uh, so this is some work by Juan Clement Kockenbosch, 2006. And then in some local models, uh, as, as Marcus well <coughs> explained in his talk, you can actually compute all orders. Um, so what does this equation look like? So it tells what the, the uh, anti-homorphic dependence is of these uh, topological string amplitudes and comes from the degeneration of the Riemann surface. So there are two ways. One, you can split in two pieces, and the other, it can uh, degenerate without splitting in two. And uh, those are the two types of contribution. So this is a recursive relation. It's recursive in this, um, well, in the genus, or slightly better in the <coughs> Euler character chi. So, and as I said, it determines Fg up to a final number of constants. And again, the origin of this equation is the unitarity or the non-empty anticles cohomology. So uh, what's the extension to, um, to open strings? Um, so for open strings, we have uh, the similar definition of the, of the uh, topological string amplitudes. We have some background D brains in the game. And uh, now we have. Um, yeah, so we have some complex deltromies, but we also have some real, which are associated essentially to the length of the boundaries. And uh, this moduli space is real and has co-dimension one boundaries. And um, many people warn us of these um, co-dimension one boundaries. And uh, <coughs> indeed, these are these are causing troubles, especially the tadpole. So um, there are two conditions. <clears throat> and on which one can write the uh, extension to open strings. One is this tadpole cancellation condition. And uh, the second is uh, the condition that the FGH do not depend on continuous open string moduli. So uh, I don't want to get into discussion of this, but uh, in the talk, but if you want to discuss afterwards, <coughs> I'll be happy to do it. So um, under this condition, then, there are only uh, contributions to the homophic anomaly from the, the these this tadpole degeneration where the uh, length of the boundary component shrinks to zero size. And uh, so these open stream degenerations do not contribute. And then um, this is the, the extension. So you get the BCOB contribution. And then you have one from, uh, from this other one. So the delta I, uh, delta that's a two-point function on the disk. Uh, so the three-level data in this game, so the CITKD is a three-point function in the sphere. This is holomorphic. Um, and the open string tree level it has a two point function on the disk, which actually is not holomorphic. So this this uh, this is uh, one very distinctive uh, difference between the closed and open string. <coughs> this, this this two point function is already not normal. Um, right. So this is this is essentially with D brains, um, and you can solve these holomorphic anomaly equations. Um, <coughs> as for the closed string, but there are some some issues which. I come to in a moment. But really, this extended holomorphic anomaly only reaches its full potential if you include unoriented strings. Um, and uh, the tadpole cancellation between uh, oriented, uh, 
between the um, orientables and the, the O planes and the D brains is necessary for this uh, BPS interpretation of the uh, topological string, <coughs> at least on compact Calabi-Aus. And as I said uh, before, at the moment, I have only uh, numerical evidence for the statement, but I think the numerical evidence is very compelling. I don't see uh, really a way around it. So, um, how much more time do I have? 15. 15. Um, okay, well, let me, then, uh, let, let me go um, to this discussion. So, this is, this is a digression. It's really an exercise in uh, perturbative, uh, open, and unoriented string theory, but I, I, um, I wasn't really able to find this in any uh, textbook. So, so uh, this essentially, this, this exercise just shows how this really works, that if you cancel the tadpoles at tree level, how then you get a consistent um, uh, perturbation theory at all loops. So, uh, so open and unoriented Riemann surfaces are classified by genus, the number of boundary components, and the number of cross caps. And the order of perturbation theory is given by this Euler character. And uh, one thing to note that is that at the topological level, two cross caps are equivalent to a handle. So this is supposed to be explained in these two pictures, uh, these four pictures. Um, instead of thinking of uh, these uh, open Riemann surfaces, you can also think of the double surface with an involution. These are the usually referred to as Klein surfaces. And um, the topological string uh, amplitudes are defined as before. I mean, as in the case uh, of oriented surfaces with, with boundary. And um, there isn't really a convention on how you define, how you denote these amplitudes, so let me just do it introduce one here. So um, the orientable surface is, of course, FGH, and then if you have an even number, so because of this equivalence, you can only distinguish, you have these three distinctions uh, topologically of these similar surfaces. Uh, so the even number of cross skips is K, and the odd number of cross skips R, and GH, uh, and the number of holes. So uh, you can write down the, uh, the holomorphic anomaly for these uh, amplitudes by just looking out the various Fine surfaces are going to generate, and again, um, I'm neglecting the generations in the open stream channel, so there are uh, several terms for these with an odd number of cross caps, and there are uh, a couple more terms for the, um, for the ones with, uh, with an even number of cross caps. And uh, <coughs> so these are closed stream degenerations. Uh, and then there are these tadpole um, degenerations, so this is the analog of this one on the, in the upper right there. Where the, so you, instead of having a boundary there, you can also have a cross cap, but those two actually just uh, always come together. And, and this is really uh, the important point. So when you have this generation of a, of a boundary that, that goes to infinity, you're going to replace that by a cross cap. And that's essentially a uh, tadpole <coughs> cancellation at, <coughs> at the high loop level. So then the, the, the bottom line, if you define this, um, this total amplitude at order chi uh, by adding all these uh, contributions, and that thing actually uh, satisfies just the extended holomorphic anomaly from before, um, where now we're working on the, so in the general case, we work on the, on the uh, projected moduli space, and uh, so this is denoted by this P up there, um, and <coughs> so, so there are, there, well, yeah, again, there are three terms. One, uh, one, two of them reduce uh, uh, the, the chi by two, and the last one, where the delta is now the disk plus the cross cap, that reduces the chi by one. So it, it's very similar to the extended, um, to the one uh, with FGH that I worked on before. So, um, yeah, so you can then uh, go ahead and solve this equation. Uh, and try to determine the boundary conditions as before. And, and one of the, uh, the boundary conditions that, that is very useful um, is to use this <coughs> BPS interpretation of the topological string. So um, Boris reviewed this uh, in the morning. So uh, the simplest one is the, the uh, Kupa Kuma Bafa um, uh, expansion. So, so you, take, you take a holomorphic limit so, uh, of these in principle um, Things which are not uh, holomorphic, you take the holomorphic limit of these amplitudes, you, we expand it, <coughs> and uh, in terms of the parameters, so lambda is the topological strain coupling, and you re, re expand in this way, and um, the important point is that these n, n, 
these expansion coefficients here are uh, are integer and and they're related. Uh, they count some net number of uh, PBS states um, wrapped on uh, on the two cycles of the Columbia. So um, so what is the open unoriented uh, generalization of this? Uh, so this essentially goes back to uh, Oguri Bafa in, in 2000 and. <coughs> Um, I don't know, um, so Oguri uh, and Rafa had this for non-compact cases and then uh, it was studied in, in many examples in non-compact Calabiaus. I, I don't know uh, the, the really the, uh, the full expansion in compact uh, Calabiaus, but in the examples, and uh, my favorite example is the real Quintic, um, which I won't uh, go into, but um, <coughs> It's certainly a compact case. So um, I can tell you what is the uh, what, what is the expansion. So this is really just a, is, is a rather minor mm, modification of uh, Oguri Alpha, but um, and it's very similar in structure to the one before, uh, to this one, <coughs> except that you have uh, also um, a discrete. Um, so from from this total uh, amplitude open plus unoriented, you subtract the purely closed string contribution. And uh, you have an open string modulus epsilon, uh, and, and as I said, I really only understand uh, the discrete open string moduli. <coughs> For example, uh, so you should think of a discrete Wilson. And uh, right, so you have to change uh, the normalization of the string coupling. And um, so the main observation uh, that leads to this statement, uh, the second statement, is that. Um, these expansion coefficients here are integer uh, only, only if you cancel the tadpoles between the d-brains and the o-planes. So, uh, in particular, the d-brain configuration is constrained by the choice of antifold projection. And uh, let me stress that uh, this statement really, so it, it, it arises in these examples, um, but it really arises from very detailed computation in the A and B models. So in the A model, we, we can do this using localization, and the B model, we can you use this extended holomorphic anomaly and it's essentially rigorous. So there is really a little way around this conclusion. And um, just to uh, set the stage for, um, for this comparison with the superstring, let me just uh, remind you what this real uh, topological string, by which I mean open plus unoriented, counts. So uh, the, you have the, the Calabria in the A model and, and then uh, four dimensional space. And, so Gopakuma Vata invariant state counts some sort of D2 brains wrapped on, sorry, not on spheres, but uh, in simplest case on spheres. Um, and <coughs> so for Urgui Vata, so this, uh, this real topological string setup, you, uh, um, well, you introduce a background uh, D4, uh, or four that's wrapped on the Lagrangian, and extend it along a string in space time. And then you have these states, which are, uh, in the simplest case, uh, D2 brains wrapped on the disk, ending on the Lagrangian in a uh, probably non-trivial one cycle on the Lagrangian, and bound to the string uh, in space time. And, um, yeah, and, and, and mathematically, in this uh, context of the real quintic, these, in, these are uh, real enumerative invariants in the sense of Welschinger and Solomon. So, um, so there is, essentially, from the Gromov-Witten point of view, there is, uh, um, there is quite some confidence that you can <coughs> give a rigorous definition of, of these invariants, and uh, it's always the integer invariants <coughs> are somewhat more subtle to define. But um, anyway, so let me uh, explain what is the relation to the uh, tadpole cancellation in the superstring. So I've given you this analogy, but now I want to uh, make the, the connection more concrete. So, um, given this topological string background, which in the AMO we imagine being Calabi-Yau, with some Lagrangians and uh, <coughs> with D-brains on Lagrangians and an antifold, there are two ways, mm -hmm. two ways to relate this to, type to a, a superstring. <coughs> First one, the red one, uh, which is uh, not so good. The other one, the blue one, will be better. So, um, so this is the six planes and all six planes wrapped under three cycles and filling space-time. And uh, so in this setup, tadpole cancellation in type 2a requires vanishing of totally six brain charge. And to remind you, the six brain charge of the O6 plane is four in uh, units of the covering space if you have the same cycle. 
And uh, the second setup, which is really this uh, buffer setup, you have D4 plus O4 planes on three cycles and extended on one plus one dimensions. And here, namely, there is no type of cancellation, but just for the record, let me look at the um, four, four, four plane charge of the O4 plane is one. And so to compare this with this uh, type of cancellation, I haven't really told you what is the uh, type of cancellation condition numerically, but uh, this comes now. So. Um, it, it's quite easy to see, actually, uh, that the <coughs> topological charge of the um, radiofold plane is just one, uh, again, in covering space units. And uh, you can see this from, from uh, geometrically. And it also agrees with this um, um, duality between Schon simons and topological string on conifold in the orientifold case. So, um, so, well, just by comparing those two slides, you see that uh, the O4 plane, uh, the, the, the O plane charge is the same for the topological O plane as it is for the O4 plane. And that's because they're middle dimensional. So the middle dimensional ones <coughs> are really the ones which have short one. So uh, this means that the, the tuples of the topological string are cancelled in this Uguri buffer set up precisely when the O4 D4 charge uh, cancels locally. Uh, whereas in the <coughs> these tuples of the topological string are not cancelled in this other setup where you have O6 and D6 uh, <coughs> together. So, um, so I don't <coughs> really know uh, why this would explain um, this, this uh, integrality. <coughs> why, why this explain that only in, in the rentable case you get a satisfactory BPS interpretation. But let me just note that this agree buffer string that uh, supports these states is charged on the accents of the n equal to hypermultiplet. So, Somehow the, um, this BPS state counting is only well defined when that axionic charge vanishes. So it would be really nice <laughs> to, to know what is the reason uh, for this from supergravity. <clears throat> so, um, no, okay. So this is, um, uh, this was the, <clears throat> the, the uh, end of the technical. Now let me come to the, some, some speculations. Um, so, um, well, before I come to the speculations, I, I have to explain one more technicality, which will take uh, a couple of slides. So, this is the relation of the holomorphic phenomenon into background independence. So, uh, Witten in 93 interpreted this holomorphic phenomenon equation as some kind of embodiment of background independence of the topological string. Um, so, the holomorphic anomaly, as I said, uh, controls the uh, dependence on the anti-homomorphic parts of the moduli, and in some sense this is the background around which you're expanding the topological string. And if you uh, consider the total topological string amplitude, um, then you can transform the holomorphic anomaly equations uh, by some sequence of transformations which in particular map of the top to, so you change the notation. Um, for reasons we'll which will become clear in a moment, um, <clears throat> you, you get this holomorphic form of the holomorphic anomaly, which is uh, a heat type, heat, an equation of heat type. So, heat equation type. So, uh, these are this is some of the background. And these are the y i's of the fluctuations, and here the uh, the c i j k is as before the three point function uh, on the sphere. So, um, Right, so as, as Witten pointed out, this is equivalent, this heat equation is equivalent to implementing infinitesimal Borgel Yubov transformations when you change the holomorphic polarization in a geometric quantization of the symplectic vector space. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the upshot is that while the topological string amplitudes uh, depend on the background order by order perturbation theory, the total um, amplitude has this interpretation as a background independent interpretation as a quantum state in an auxiliary Hilbert space. Um, but uh, right when this was formulated, it's um, rather puzzling. Uh, what is the significance of this Hilbert space? Uh, what selects this, uh, this state? What are the other states? And then what is the relation to background independence and the physical string? So uh, what I want to speculate about is that this extended holomorphic anomaly um, and, and also uh, the tadpole cancellation using a rectifold shed some new light on these issues, in particular this uh, number three. So, uh, as it turns out, the extension of the homomorphic anomaly equation 
uh, is equivalent to extending the seed equation by a, a convection term. So that's the terms from before, and then the delta ij is as before is the two-point function as it is. And um, this this uh, <coughs> uh, convection vector field, if you like, is, is integrable. So you can get rid of it by going to the flow line. So in other words, you can uh, get rid of this extension by shifting uh, the variables. Okay. Let me let me know that so um, let me know that this is not really a shift of back one. Okay. As the y i's really correspond to the fluctuations. However, it's uh, in in some moral agreement at least. Two general ideas about uh, relating <coughs> open, closed, uh, open to closed strings. Um, so here are the speculations in one minute. <coughs> um, so this is about the significance of the Silbert space. So, uh, so after the shift, after the shift, the uh, the open um, this psi delta <coughs> satisfies the same holomorphic anomaly equation as the closed. Uh, string wave function. So it naturally lives in the same Hubbard space as the closed double logical string. Um, now you can ask, uh, and, and in the context of open closed duality, you should, you should ask whether this might just be the same as the, as the closed uh, state. However, you can actually, it, it's very uh, easy to see that they're not the same. I mean, this, is, this arises even uh, semi classically uh, just from the disk amplitude. And uh, this disk amplitude is essentially represented by a holomorphic curve uh, in the simplest cases. And uh, known facts about holomorphic curves in Calabria lead to this uh, conjecture that the collection of all d-brains, so uh, as you vary over all the delta, <coughs> this really gives a, a basis of the entire uh, Hilbert space. So it fills the entire Hilbert space um, with life. Okay. Uh, in the su suitable sense of, of what one means by basis. So this is the first uh, speculation, and, and really I cannot resist to uh, also tell you about the second speculation that comes from the uh, tadpole cancellation using our antifold. So there is a fairly well uh, understood sense in which the number of holomorphic curves of fixed topology is finite. So if you fix the uh, orientifold projection, there is really only um, a finite number of D-brain configurations that will cancel the tadpoles for fixed uh, or antifold projection. And uh, this then, in this uh, setup, <coughs> selects a finite number of quantum states in this background independent Hilbert space, HW. And so uh, the, the conclusion, speculative conclusion, is that there is this new consistency condition of the topological string, maybe tadpole cancellation, I mean, it's new for topological string, and that reduces the number of physically relevant states to a finite number. And, uh, well, clearly this would be rather pretty realization of some basic idea about um, string theory. Thanks. Are there some uh, questions or comments? Nothing. I don't see anything. Okay, if not, then uh, let's thank Johannes again. Thank you.